Vucevic to draw draft. Have a look at that left foot step from the boundary line. Ted. Not a regular, but a wonderful goal. Ted Richards. Goes long-ish, hoping for Richards. Forced the punch from behind. Kick wasn't long enough. Bounce eludes Holland. Picked up by Richards. Runs inside 50 and sends it home. <laughs> He was a part-time forward, <laughs> sometime backman at the Bombers, uh, but in his nine years at the Sydney Swans, he's become an All-Australian centre-half back. Ted Richards joins us after about four years trying to rope him in, Mike. Uh, welcome We've wanted you, you Teddy. <laughs> welcome Thanks. aboard. Thanks, Jared. What do you uh, think when you look back and uh, you see yourself in an Essendon jumper? That's why he wasn't getting a regular game. He was leer rising on his opposite yeah, foot. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Oh, gee, I was skinny too. <laughs> I need to ask you, how on earth in round one, serious question, how did you get beaten by GWS? Was it attitudinal? Yeah, I reckon it was. Um, well, you know, full respect to GWS. Yeah. You know, but if you guys play well, that doesn't happen. Um, did you have full respect for them or did you take it too easily? I, if I did, you know, John Long and I have spoken about this before. There's effort and there's absolute effort. Mm. And unless you produce the absolute effort every week, you can get found out. And I think that's what happened... Round one, um, uh, we we had a lot of uh, missed shots on goal, and GWS were always in the game, always in the game. And then the last quarter, they ran over the top of us. Can I take you to, back to the Hanbury situation and, and the player mentality on this? You're playing on the same ground. You see the incident happen, Hanbury and Hurley. What's your instinctive response? Yeah, so I was down the other end of the ground, and um, there was no free kick pa- paid, uh, paid. So I thought that maybe it wasn't that bad. But then when I saw Hurley. Um, on the ground that I was a little concerned maybe, maybe it was something bad and uh, I think one of our guys had a shot for goal and they, could, they replayed it a couple of times on the big screen and um, the Essendon fans seemed to have an opinion of it. Hmm. <laughs> Can I take you back to the start of the season? Obviously Buddy was uh, the big story uh, last October it broke. Then Buddy turns up after uh, extended celebrations as a Hawthorne player. He finally turns up. Take us through the story from there because uh, there's been uh, so many headlines about Buddy uh, as late as only a couple of weeks ago where he uh, trashed a couple of cars uh, in an accident. But the great news is he's playing good footy. But how were you dealing as a club and as a playing group with all of these headlines that were uh, part and parcel of daily life in Sydney? Yeah, well, I probably didn't appreciate how big a spotlight he was going to you know, bring to the footy club. Um, we don't let it be a distraction, but... From my perspective, apart from the, the crashing of the car, there, there hasn't been anything. I, I think that a lot of the articles written about you know, different things, it's been something that's come of nothing. So, um, um, and I, I don't think we helped Buddy with the, the way we started the year with the losses. You know, that really put the spotlight on us. And um, um, so, but from my perspective, you've been great. Did when you take exception to the likes of Alan Jones on 2GB saying, <laughs> that the club was divided. He doesn't know AFL footy, but he knows football and that Buddy Franklin and the big dollars has divided this club? Yeah, well, that, that, that's been something that's been quite in- interesting, that people in Sydney that really don't have never followed AFL or anything like that, all of a sudden they've got an opinion on us and um, something I just didn't really have never had to deal with before. Teddy, the, was the player group consulted about Buddy? Uh, we know that Jared McVeigh was, was asked his view, but when did you know that, that he was coming in and did you have any input to that? Uh, yeah, I knew about a week or two before um, the, the trade officially went through and um, um, I spoke to John Longmire about it. I was quite excited about the prospect of having him at the club and um, um, yeah. One it, final one before Jason uh, changes topic, because he always likes changing the topic when Buddy is concerned. I was about to ask him one about it. Oh, okay. go on then. I was just going to say, it's, it's interesting because everyone was talking about what a slow start he had. But when you look at what he's bringing to the table, and in particular the last couple of weeks, he's starting to take those contested marks in the attacking 50, which at different stages has been lacking for the Swans. Yeah, well, he, he might have had a slow start, but as a whole team, we had a slow start. and. Um um, His yeah. hands are as good as I've seen them yep. over the last couple of weeks. And when he's doing these sorts of things, all of a sudden you realise what you have got in him. Yeah, and um, you know, he was really accurate on the weekend. I think he might have kicked five straight. Um, it's just it's just really, really damaging if you've got him and Tippo d- down deep forward. They're these. contested marks in the attacking 50, Jared. Well, that's I think, why I getting... think the stat from last year was a total of 19. Mm-hmm. So he's taken seven in the last two weeks. That's why he's getting paid the big bucks. Now, let's cut to the chase. He's the <laughs> captain of the Bondi billionaires up in the forward line. Yeah. You're the captain of the defence, the Maroubra mo- uh, minions. Yeah. <laughs> Is there an issue with the cash? Because it seems to be told by everybody else that there's a problem. Yeah, well, 
I've heard the talk, but the, internally, there's nothing. You know, okay. um, we love him being there. We love Tipo being there. We, that's, that's the way it is. Teddy, can I take you back to 2010? Now, you played a really good game in your first year in Sydney in the grand final. 2010, you go back to the seconds for six or seven weeks. Yep. Someone suggested to me that you thought it was over, that you were going to head to Europe, visit your brother, and the career was over. Is that right? Yeah, I, um, yeah, I got dropped, and uh, I think I was out for about seven weeks getting the bus to Canberra each week to play in the reserves, and I was coming out of contract at the end of that year, and um, I still have a big passion for football, but I thought that um, perhaps footy was going to be done with me, and um, a possibility was moving to Sweden, and older brother lives over there and um, studying over there. So two years later, you're playing on Buddy yeah. in the grand final, and a lot of us thought your performance on him in the last quarter probably was as decisive as any. Yeah, um, I had to pinch myself because, um, yeah, for a while there, I, I thought that I'd, 2010 was going to be my last year of football. And Do you tell him about this? Uh, Surely no, you've no, mentioned no, it a no, couple no, of well, times. Maybe we have had a chat a few times, but I'm sure there's plenty of highlights where you could have put up there of Buddy getting the better of me. Before you leave that one, or before we leave it, yeah. you played on injections that day, didn't you? You had a crook ankle? Yeah, so... Um, how yeah. many on the day and how many in the week? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know how many throughout the week. There was, there was a lot of um, um, draining it because it was swollen up so much. And I, I wasn't confident that my ankle was going to be able to get through the game. And I was paranoid that I was going to get injured early on in the game, get subbed off and then be a liability, you know, if we were to lose. But um, the uh, physios really just stra strapped it and locked the ankle up. And I got a jab before the game in every quarter and um, was able to get through the game. Ryan O'Keefe's been a brilliant player for the club for many, many years. Is it just a matter of his time's come? Or what does he have to do to get back into this side? Yeah, Pebs has, has been an outstanding player for, for the club and, and he's, um, he's playing really good football in the reserves. Fortunately, we've got um, a lot of depth in the team right now and um, 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 Ryan's just, just doing what he, can, what he can, playing really well and I'm sure when the opportunity comes for him to come back in, he'll, he'll just slot right back in. Can I ask you about your midfield? Yep. I think it's the best midfield in the competition. Kennedy, Hannabury, you know who they are. Yes. Uh, McVeigh, Parker. Jack, Parker yep. and Bird. <coughs> McVeigh, as good as he's been in big games for three or four years, he still slips under the radar, doesn't he? Well, probably externally. Uh, maybe being in Sydney doesn't, may not get the recognition that he deserves, but internally he won our best and fairest last year. He, he does what we need him to do every week. Goals from outside 50. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, even when we had issues down back, was able to slot back into defence and help us out down there. So um, internally, we, we really respect him. Of that group, has the development of Luke Parker, in fact, he's nearly gone to an A grader. Has that surprised you at all? Yes and no. Like, he, he wasn't a high draft pick. But in the 40s, wasn't it? Yeah, 40, but if, yep, you, if yep. you see his, his approach to training Monday to Friday and then the way he goes about you know, on game day, he's, he's got a good all-round game. He's kicks the goals when he needs to and for such a small guy he's, he's a really good contested mark too the other one that's not in there uh, had a world record 64 possessions uh, in the Neufel with uh, two or three goals on the weekend in Tom Mitchell it's, uh, it's, a, it's a tough group <laughs> to get in yeah poor Tommy hurt his ankle and um, I think he had the week off or got rested and um, <laughs> uh, since then we've been playing good football and Tommy's doing what he can and I'm, I'm sure when we play Geelong next week he, he'll be amongst him did you say but over 60 64 there? And four goals. That's a possession every... Uh, Did anyone else have the footy? <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, let's get political. You, you, you both love these oh. questions. Right. ANZ Stadium. Oh. We've been known to occasionally give it a cook here. It's been okay. probably slightly below the pristine condition we'd expect. Yeah. What's it like to play on? It's a great stadium to play on. Great. Yeah. We spoke about this great. off air and we told you we're not <laughs> copping this. There's more to it than that. Um, well, we train on the SCG and um, most of our home games are on the SCG. So... For me, that's probably my favourite stadium, but I enjoy playing on ANZ too. You do, Would, do you? Yeah. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you miss the full houses? I mean, one of the great attractions of the SCG <laughs> fibber, fibber. <laughs> is the buzz, and it doesn't yeah. uh, light up at the present time because you're playing the size that would fill the SCG at ANZ Stadium, and I understand there were great political reasons to do the deal with ANZ Stadium, but right now, surely the moves down the track when the deal is done will be full-time at the SCG. Um, yeah, that's not something that I, I, I worry about. But uh, yeah, we, we had a good atmosphere there against against Hawthorne. We played preliminary final against Colling. We had a good atmosphere there. So um, um, our next game's at the SCG. But I think we've got maybe Richmond or out there at some stage. How many more years have you got left? 
On my contract? Or? No, the body. Because <laughs> uh, you don't look like stopping. Oh, um, that's that's something that you know I can't answer. I'm contracted for next year. Very much enjoying my football. Got the passion to keep playing. So, um, yeah. Well, Jason said if you uh, didn't bag ANZ Stadium, we're going to have to wrap you up. And that's exactly what we're, we're going to have to do. Great to have you, Dan. Uh, enjoy the bye and uh, good luck for the rest of the season, Ted. Oh, thanks very much, guys. All Australian Centre back, Ted Richards, our special guest.